the first time we're studying females as females with a menstrual cycle. So we are understanding how the drug changes its effect over the menstrual cycle. And that is something that despite all of this talk about how important it is to start including females in research, really it's not happening. Yes, so yes. I've been working in a women's health research for quite some time and I am really interested in how the main neurotransmitter systems in the brain change over the menstrual cycle. One of the most exciting things I think about finding microdosing as a potential treatment for PMDD is that the cause of PMDD is thought to be very closely related to how the serotonin system in the brain works. This study is about acknowledging that there are disorders that are either made worse by the menstrual cycle, but actually in this particular case, emerge from the menstrual cycle. So it is a mental health recognized uh, and it doesn't exist outside of the menstrual cycle. It is every bit as severe as a major mood disorder like depression, but it is time locked to the menstrual cycle. It took a very long time for PMDD to be recognized as a mental health condition. Have a criteria that you could meet and reach a diagnosis. And this was largely a political question answering type goal to come up with a diagnosis. But to get that diagnosis, you need to experience five different symptoms. And it could include irritability, motivation, feeling down, uh, tearfulness, anger, and these sorts of things. But you have to ha experience five different domains. There are going to be a lot of people who don't tick those boxes, but they do feel very angry or they do feel very low in motivation or very anxious and it is impacting their life. And they would be a candidate for receiving some kind of treatment, but because of the way the criteria were on the day, they won't meet the criteria for PMDD. So we're interested in not just the substantial proportion of women who meet the box ticking for PMDD, but the even larger proportion of females who could benefit from symptom alleviation around their menstrual cycle, known as PMS. It's not going, PMS is not, a dis, uh, is not in and of itself a disorder. I believe what I'm trying to say is that PMDD is too, res too restrictive by its criteria to include all females with a menstrual cycle who could um, benefit greatly from alleviating some of those symptoms. So there's gonna be a lot of very normal PMS um, a little bit of irritability, a little bit of maybe easier to cry, a little bit of, um, you know, easier to get distracted, a little bit of pain. Those things are still going to be considered a fairly normal experience of menstrual cycle, um, you know, PMS, um, but it's about those people that are sub PMDD. Yes, there are treatments that are recommended. Probably two most common approaches that are worth explaining. The first is antidepressants. So standard antidepressants, they can be given and they may be helpful. Evidence has suggested that they can be tapered around the menstrual cycle. So you might only take them in the second half of your menstrual cycle. Usually that's 14 days after the start. And that's usually estimating that it's 14 days until the next one. Or you might up a dose, so have a stable dose and then up a dose. Uh, and sometimes often it's just a, a stable dose. The other one is hormone treatments. That's most often the combined oral contraceptive pill. Um, the general evidence for the combined oral contraceptive pill is that it's much better at the physical symptoms, so things like pain and bloating than the mental health symptoms. And then the most aggressive treatment, uh, usually reserved for very debilitating cases, and actually there's not a lot of awareness about, is total suppression of the menstrual cycle. Essentially, a person with a menstrual cycle will then enter a phase of almost quasi-menopause, so it's a bit like a menopause. It's reversible, uh, but it holds all of those hormones very low uh, and it stops that cycling that seems to cause the effects on mood. What's important about the luteal phase? So hormones on day one of menses, so when uh, somebody's period starts, are very low and they stay low for about 10 days. And then after 10 days, they start to slowly rise. And at their peak, they trigger ovulation. And this is the onset of the luteal phase. So it's when estrogen's very high, and then you get the sequence of dropping and rising hormones. But overall, uh, key hormones, especially ones that affect the brain, estrogen and progesterone, are very high. And in fact, the triggering the onset of the next follicular phase, or the other half, is a rapid withdrawal from those hormones. 
So the luteal phase, broadly construed compared to the follicular phase, is a phase of high hormones versus low hormones. And it's actually in that luteal phase that you get symptoms. So for PMDD, what makes it PMDD and not make a depressive episode is that essentially symptoms will be alleviated during the follicular phase. So pretty rapidly after the onset of menses, uh, you'll have no symptoms and it takes until that next luteal phase for them to ramp up again. The idea with uh, dosing somebody during the luteal phase is essentially to provide them with the medication to alleviate the symptoms only, only in the phase that they need it. We know that estrogen increases the number of 5H2A receptors that we have and if we stop the brain's ability to uh, receive serotonin via a 5H2A shaped lock, so we lock that so no keys, serotonin keys can get in basically, then we don't get an improvement of mood from SSRIs. So what we're talking about is that while SSRIs offer a blunt tool, MB22001, is that it's a much sharper tool, a much more direct tool. And when you have that kind of thing, you can say, well, maybe we can get away with lower doses. Maybe people experience less side effects because it's more specific. It's not working in other places of the brain. Maybe it will work better for people that have had to stop SSRIs because they didn't like the way it made them feel. Or it might be more potent in those ways, so for the people that SSRIs didn't work for. And that's, that's the hope. And that's why I'm excited because there's actually a beautiful match. It's not like we, we have a drug and we were trying to, you know, decide which disorder to give it next. We had a disorder and we identified that this is a drug that could do